Good morning to y'all. Today we're going to talk about gompang. We're going to tom some gompang on E. And I just thought perhaps I'd interject a little verbalization here because the last video made you see quite a few comments that there was a lack of understanding about what the heck I was doing. And today, gompang is kind of boring. And I thought it would be more exciting for me anyhow to make a video and share it with y'all. <coughs> and I have a, my own unique way of doing it based on the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. And I have to make it up as I go along. So I'll show you that I made up and uh, we'll mix a little poon one. So this is a Gompang Chua Cow, which is temporary. And it's just a pile of locks all placed in a place that I want to keep safe. As you can see, it will soon have a more permanent wall, and that's the, what is that? That's the west wall of our motorcycle barn garage. Here's a wall, it's sort of almost finished. Uh, well, it's all cemented together, it needs to get covered. And then on the top there, I have some more Chua Cow temporary stuff, uh, keep the rain out. And eventually that will be wood. Well, no, eventually the floor is coming down here. That's not going to be wood. But yeah, the floor, that floor up there is this, now the second floor, which will be coming down to that level there. And uh, eventually. So all the walls I've shown you are actually two walls. Mm -hmm. or double wall cinder block thingies which is not the normal Thai way of doing things. What I do is I put a space in between the two walls because I don't really think those cinder blocks are very strong and then I fill it in with sand. In this case I'm waiting to fill it in because I have to put some wires in there for some switches or think about it or something. And it is exceptionally wide for a reason, or a couple of reasons. One is like you see like where the cement is there in the middle, that's the exact middle of the house. And what I intend to do is shift the load bearing capability or capacity of, well, shift the load actually, shift the load of the whole house up there, which is going to be more. Actually, that's going to turn in from a two story house into a three story house, and then instead of being wood, there's going to be cement blocks up there. So there's going to be a lot of weight on those additional two floors. And as you can see, it's kind of just held together by a couple of bolts and then that big piece of wood which is teak and is really strong but I want to make it stronger so instead of using these pillars to hold up the house and sort of support the I'm wall. using the wall to strengthen the pillars and then as I mentioned earlier the floor will come down here and my intention is to use metal instead of a, you know steel frame sort of like I used in the kitchen and uh, then put a cement floor there and then on top of the cement floor I can build another set. So there are 12 floor. pillars supporting the house which basically divides it into six, six, you know, six quadrants or well they wouldn't be quadrants would they? Or thirds and it's only that third of the house at the front that will become three stories. The rest of it here will stay two stories. You know that white part up there? That's actually sheetrock. Uh, and this textured finish is uh, sort of an idea, but it's not really the idea I had. It's sort of the translation of the idea I had to the person who helped me do it. But I kind of like the way a roll of hardware cloth that I use to reinforce the cement, uh, reinforce the bond between the floor and the first layer of blocks. As you can imagine, the workplace is full of little hazards and of course there are whoop, more of them because uh, of the wearing of sandals. I'm sure there would be much fewer incidences of accident claims if there were more serious footwear down there. Oh, gee, many Christmas.
Remember to practice bowing. Yeah, you see where this door had a little trouble. Coefficient of linear expansion, dry season, rainy season. So this is what I'm working on today. Actually, I'd be happy if I could just get one layer of blocks on there after I fill it up with sand and uh, put some wires on there. You see, my, my approach to this medium is to use a little steel, a little wire, and as little cement as possible. And of course, time will tell if that's a good idea or a bad idea. But I once read that uh, there's a synergistic relationship between steel and cement and kind of counting on that being an accurate piece At of the moment the bamboo is kind of taking up this space but in the future there'll be some little stairs there actually stairs going that way and stairs going that way and they will have a little platform right about here and then the stairs will go up 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 see that over there up to uh, let's see well it's nine blocks high which is right about where that string is nine blocks high is where the second floor will start so this part right here is the only part that i didn't put a cement floor on this is going to be the ante room and i'm going to try making this lower so that there'll be enough headroom for maybe a six foot person and then the big main doors since Thai houses traditionally have big huge main doors will be out here it'll be another little roof over there and stuff like that it's all very clear in my head and I realize it's not going to translate onto this video uh, so oh yeah what I use for doing cement ah, is this pastry bag and that is a hangover from my days in the kitchen but it, I like it it works really good this for me. is my cement mixer well, it has one accessory. Now, the bucket here, the plastic thing, well, actually, its first life was as a bathtub, but it really is for mixing cement. And I've never seen anybody else put it in a cart before, but I don't know if could have done it without using that cart. This is the one accessory. Okay, quite a while ago I purchased those blocks and I purchased a little cement and I took these bags and I filled them up with sand and put it over here so I would have dry sand whenever I needed it. And that was that was last year sometime. As you can see, time has taken its toll on the bags and they've kind of rotted a little bit. And uh, since I'm using a mixture of two parts sand to one part cement, and I'm a little picky about that preciseness of that mixture, I use a little scoop and I measure everything really accurately. So in addition to two parts sand and one part cement, I put in this stuff here, which a mortar plasticizer. You know, I think this stuff is actually made in the United States. It seems to work well. It makes the cement stickier. And it doesn't have any English on it at all, but uh, still works. Oh, 
Is that called production value? There's a little poo right there. A little crab. I saw that crab the other day. Oh, a little buddy in to help me work today. This is why I like dry sand. So sand has to be cleaned. It's all full. Well, not all, but there are some little gravelly things in there. And maybe a few shells. And since I have two cats, maybe some other stuff. Oh, time to kick them. Okay. Uh, I kind of made a little mistake, which is to say this is take two. And since I take one involved one bucket of sand, take two doubles my daily workload. And in this sand there are some lumps, so we sort of make a soft suggestion that they get smaller. And this is not good stuff to breathe. Good enough. It's my favorite part, which I don't know how to get right, but. Sneaky. I learned that from watching well, people. Fate would have it. I emptied the other bag. I still need a little left, so I get to move this 50, 50 kilo, 50 kilo bag. Not my favorite thing to do. And just a couple of scoops to top it off. And I mentioned that I bought this cement last year. Well, cement gets uh, lumpy. It starts to bond with itself. If uh, it sits around too long. So these little lumps will take more than just a... take more than just a soft suggestion to get them to break up. Same cleaning process for the cement which I wouldn't have to do if the cement was fresh. But since it's so old, I need to make that sweet dry lumps and powder. This stuff is really not good for you. Okay, this is a, one of my many peaceful persuaders. What's it called? Oh, hammer. No. I can't remember. Can I carry this thing in my toolbox? <laughs> I've had it at least 30 years. And maybe never use it. Probably used it the first time I bought it. Carry it around, carry it around. Who's a hand now? Whew. This uh This is one of those occasions where you don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. Okay, well I did ask the guy at the store how to use this stuff. And he didn't speak English, and he didn't know uh, how to explain it to me. So he just said something like, Leo Tecun, which is basically up to you. I like this stuff because it's kind of thick. Three, four, five. And I use uh, one plop for each scoop of cement. And that's about eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, one bucket of cement, twelve scoops. Well, plop. I'm just guessing how much water, or more accurately, I add my guess. My first guess, my second guess, my third guess, I add water slowly. I kind of figured out that it's better to have the cement a little dry than it is to have it wet. Too wet. Too wet, not good. Since that stuff is kind of goopy, it's a little challenging to uh, get it to mix it with water. Okay, the bucket gets temporarily placed underneath here because there is a tipping point. And I first have to mix the cement uh, and the dry sand thoroughly before I add the water. So it can rest right there and protect me from spilling the dry mix all over the place, which 
I think I've only done about four or five times. So when I first looked up cement on the internet, I stressed very strongly that mixing the sand and the cement together thoroughly while both of them are dry was most important. And I've even seen a few other people do that. So I kind of use this as a breaking point, or a point to break actually. Um, once I get this sand mixed completely with the cement, I'll go over there and have some eggs. Take a break. And this is why the bucket goes in the air. And as I said, I had a hard time in As a side note, I think it's reasonable to mention that my wife thinks I'm absolutely crazy for talking to the camera like this, and the neighbors are all at the pool to see how long it is before they take me away in a white jacket. <laughs> of course, the good side, or the plus side, is that nobody understands a word I'm saying. And there's not a person in this village that speaks English. Although, I must admit, I'm violating a folkway by speaking at this volume. Oh, there's the eggs ready now. Doesn't she look beautiful today? Wanjai. <laughs> so this is my standard breakfast. Two eggs. I guess you could call them basted. Or up medium on a pile of cow ja, accompanied with a substantial amount of garlic. I used to take a lot of pills, nutritional supplements, and since they are not available to me financially or geographically, I've kind of gotten down to eggs and garlic. And once again, we'll find out if that's a good idea or not as time oh, goes yeah. by. That's my vitamin C over there in the bag. Papaya. Well, that's not exactly the Thai word for it. I have a hard time remembering the Thai word. Well, as you can see, I did a lot of this off camera. Give me all a break from the boring tedium of this experience. Which I don't really kind of, I don't personally find boring, but I can appreciate that it might be boring to watch. Um, I, just, I use the shovel to fill it in here as much as I can, but the goal is to have highly condensed, packed sand uh, acting almost as a type of, well, as a rigid uh, load-bearing medium. Because as a very wise man once said, castles made of sand wash, in, wash into the sea eventually. <clears throat> so two, uh, two different cement walls trapping the cement, trapping the sand, seem to work pretty well. And once upon a time, a very long time ago, shoot, what was I, like the, like the seventh grade, I guess. Yeah, when I was in the seventh grade, I wrote a report about quicksand. Sort of what I'm making here. It's when the sand, oh, when the water settles all the way down to the bottom. And, uh, well, I don't really know technically, but I'm thinking that what happens is the water displaces the air. Sort of like that the classroom experiment where the professor uh, fills up a, a crock pot full of rocks and then asks the class if it's full and they all say yes. So then he throws in a whole bunch of pebbles and they oh, ooh. And then they ask if it's full and they say yes and then he throws in a bunch of sand and 
asks if it's full, and they say yes, and then he pours in a couple of beers. And then it's full. And the moral of the story is there's always room for a couple of beers. But, you know, since I don't have beer, it's always room for a couple of glasses of water. Well, there you go, I just found an air pocket because all the water disappeared. So part of the theory behind this is that uh, it gives it some strength, this away, load bearing strength, but also provides a sort of a, not really insulation so much as uh, it stores the cool, um, coolness of the evening, which is to say these walls will change temperature very, very slowly. Not probably this one never get hot. Well, this is the coolest room in the house. Actually, my tea is right. My tea stash is over there. You know that store in a cool, dry place kind of thing. Well, there's no place to dry, but at least this is cool. This goes on and on and ends up getting health like this until it's completely full and completely packed and. Completely and then we'll move on to the next stage of the game. So that's about it for this section. And next I will uh, next I will be adding some wire. And uh, oh, you've, you by now notice these little things. It's not a lot, but a little steel goes a long way. And uh, so these blocks are really kind of flimsy, and then really the only thing that holds them together is this, this half-cylindrical half thing right here. When two go together, it creates a cylinder of cement. So it's that cylinder of cement that contributes to the vertical load-bearing capacity, and it also stabilizes it that way. And I've added the steel to increase that load bearing capacity. And then I use wire, which... Okay, so this section is all prepped now and basically just waits for the arrival of the cement. Oh yeah, I did mention that hardware cloth that I put down on the floor before I start the wall. I also use that same idea going up the wall. Hey, here's the other section. I put a little cement right there. That plasticizer is supposed to help the cement stick to the cement. But as you can see, it doesn't really work that well. I mean, that's not the kind of wall I want to have in my house. This one here, a little more solid, but you can see these little joints, they don't Maybe you can't see because I'm shaking the camera and the wall. <laughs> so naturally, I do not really like this kind of wiggly wiggly. You notice that now that the sand's in there, it doesn't wiggle? Well, that's encouraging. But just as a little added, well, added reinforcement, I put these little tapu poon thingies in here. And then I chip away at whatever the heck I put there. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I have to chip away just a little bit of this. As, as, as I understand it, it's, it's basically kind of a good thing to have all this level, which is not my forte. Actually, I'm probably a little bit better at keeping it level than I am keeping it straight. Anyhow, that goes like that. And then uh, some wire will visit it soon. Oh, oh. 
sort of fun. And mostly Argos. It's off to a nice easy start. And uh, the rest of we get some more and more challenging. One thing I found most surprising really works works on the stomach. Uh, surprise. I I used to make once upon a time yeah, once upon a time I used to make bagels. So I would mix hundred pound bags of flour. I can't remember three buckets of water and the malt you know, something like half a pound of yeast or something like that. Oh yeah, there's some salt in there too. But anyhow, through the process of experimenting with that mixture, I ended up liking the process of mixing everything really, really wet and slowly drying it down. Basically, what I'm doing here. And, uh, of course, it may end up being dry. And then I'll just have a little sort of adapted my bagel dough making technique to cement making technique. Which I'm sure I've mentioned it. The, uh, the Thai word for cement is poon. And it's a lot easier to say poon than it is cement. Poon, yeah. That's one syllable versus two syllables. You see, it's getting a little, a little dry. Not bad, guess what? Okay, I am now ready to start piping the poon, which is another demanding part of this job. The whole, uh, well, it's very good to mix the cement uh, and sand very well when it's dry. And then uh, take a break, eat breakfast, come back and do the relaxing filling of all the sand and the wire. And then uh, once they have, you know, all that breakfast digested well. Up the cement and start stacking the blocks. And this is, uh, I've never seen anybody do it this way. I've never heard of anybody doing this way. I don't remember how I got the idea to do this way. But I kind of like this way. Second block. I'm not even sure if that's in the frame. That's the first block. I'm doing one at a time. I mean, I think it's possible to put a whole bunch of cement down there and you know do more. But I like the. Uh, blocks to be really just kind of smashed right together. And if you do the cement ahead, then the cement, the, the block that's there sucks the moisture out of it and you end up with more of a space there. And uh, it's not the way I do it. Also, not a bad idea to have one of these things around.
Well, we're all set up for the next shot. I think it's raining. Might be able to hear that. And Ui came home from school. And uh, look what she brought me. Mmm, this is coconut ice cream. Probably doesn't even have any dairy products in it. And all those little peanuts. Mmm, mm, yum, 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 yum. Time to take a break. Okay, for the next several hours, there's going to be a whole bunch of this. And a whole bunch of this. This is part of the job where I get to be my assistant. Which I get to do. Previous dwellers. I'm going to move, set up these blocks. Seems like a good exercise. I don't know how much these things weigh. A couple of kilos. That would be about maybe five pounds. Oh, that's a good exercise. Three, six, nine, ten. Two, four, six, eight, sixteen. Ooh. Yeah, and they come uh, they come with a little residue in the middle that will grit, which I don't like to flip up into the cement. So they pretty much need to be done. How am I doing? 3, 6, 9, 12, 14, 15, 16. This section of wall is four and a half blocks long so I cut the uh, cut the blocks in half with my angle grinder and again I use sand to conserve on the use of cement which through the course of this video dawned on me is very green because <laughs> sand is green and cement is not so the less cement I use the greener it is although they do make green cement and nowadays you can even buy it in Thailand it's like unbelievably expensive here comes the wife. Hope she doesn't hit the video camera. How was town, dear? Yeah. Put a little something under there. Turn kid, my leploy. Video, my leploy. Oh. Yeah, then I just put a little cement cap on there. Sleeps better. Well, better if I waited till the water left, but. I won't. I won't wait. I'll fill her right up right this moment. Actually, this is not a bad time to mention that I read someplace that cement never dry well not never cement doesn't dry it cures and uh, once it is completely dry it falls apart it flakes and just goes back to sand it's, oops I did mention that the curing process involves all the little crystals little fingers grabbing hold of everything so I guess that process goes on for a very long time so like when I put that wall together over there and it was a little shaky, it will get stronger over time. Well, well, not, you know, within a certain parameter. Perimeter. Parameter? Perimeter. I think that, that one might be parameter.
And now a moment of silence for those still suffering from doing this yesterday. So that's about it. Added two rows today, which I think I said at the beginning I was happy to just add one. But since I made that little mistake and did a take two on the, on the sand, then we ended up with two rows. This is how much cement was left over. Hey. You notice those symbols at the end there? They're for you. And that web URL is a path to take if there is any motivation to get your questions answered. I also wish to mention that my building fund has been exhausted. Perhaps you could perform an act of tamboon. I would love to make another video. We very much would like to install that last wall which has to wait until we can purchase a door. Walls are built around doors. Doors aren't stuck into pre-erected walls.